So now that we've covered some of the basic commands as well as how to be more flexible with them with the addition of options, we're going to cover a couple more useful commands that you will find yourself using a lot in Unix. So for example, if you want to make directories using say a standard operating system like Macintosh or Windows, usually you right click on the background and you click on new folder. And say yeah, untitled folder and then I can right click on it and move it to trash if I want to delete it. So here through Unix we do a similar thing just through typing commands and to create a directory you type in mkdir which stands for make directory and then the name of the directory so in this case I'm going to call it temp and here it is. Accordingly if I want to remove it I just type in rmdir that's one word and then the name of a directory now notice if I want to remove a directory, it has to be empty to use the rmdir command. So for example, if I wanted to remove example folder, it would tell me directory not empty. So let's see what's an example folder. Uh, we have this tmp1.txt. And from Unix, if we want to see what it says or interact with it, we type in a command called cat, which stands for concatenate, which will spit out everything that's in the text folder onto your terminal. So I type in cat, a space in the name of the file, and you see it says hello world, I am tmp1.txt. Okay, another useful option if you had a very, very long text file and you only wanted to see the first 10 lines or so of the text file is a command called head temp1.txt. Okay, so in this case, if it was a very long text file, you would only see the first, say, 10 lines or so and you could use other options to control how many lines you wanted it to display. Now if I want to remove this text folder, or text file, sorry, uh, instead of right clicking on it like I would with Macintosh or Windows and selecting delete, I just type in rm, not rmdir, just rm and the name of the text file. Okay. It asks you if you want to remove it and I say yes and now it's gone. Okay. And now I can remove this example folder and it won't get angry at me. Now let's see example folder 2. And again, if I want to see what's inside this, I can just type in cat tmp2 and it says, hey, I have two lines of text. And that's what's in that text file. Now, oh, one other thing. You might see me typing cd space dot dot. Dot dot means I want to go up one level from where I am right now. So right now I'm in a folder called example folder 2 and if I wanted to get to the desktop directory which is just one level above I type in cd space dot dot. Okay. Dot dot is uh, Unix nomenclature for one level up and a dot means the current directory. Just a little bit of technical details there. So if I wanted to remove example folder 2 uh, and everything that's in it, say nuke the entire thing, uh, nuke the bastards, um, you would type in rm, then this command r, and the name of the directory. All right. And again, it'll say examine files. No, I don't want to. Oops, sorry. I mean, yes, I do want to and it'll list which ones do you want to remove. And I'm going to say yes. I want to remove everything that's inside there. So those are a couple other commands you might find useful. For the beginning Unix user, I have to caution them using the rm and rmdir commands. They do not send stuff to the recycling bin or the trash bin. Okay, these things are gone forever. So if you use remove, think of it as you are going into everything you've deleted and put into the recycling bin and you're clicking permanently delete. All right. Later on I'll tell you how you can set up your command so that it will ask you whether you're sure you want to remove them like it has here but the standard is it will not ask you if you want to remove them it'll just go ahead and do it. So you really need to make sure you know what you're doing before you use those commands. Okay. So that's it for MKDIR, RMDIR, and the RM commands, as well as some other terminology, such as what dot dot means and what the dot means. And in the next tutorial, we will be covering what the path is.
Okay, so this is something that is talked about in the installation instructions for FSL and AFNI, and we'll discuss more about what it is and how you can change it.